Somewhere over the icy expanse of the North Pacific, inside the belly of a cargo aircraft slicing through minus 50 Celsius winds at 35,000 feet, lies a secret that powers the world's luxury sushi industry. It's not just the fish, it's the temperature. And it's not just cold, it's engineered cold. Inside specialized shipping modules, suspended within climate-controlled aircraft holds, select cuts of bluefin, tuna, uni, and wild-caught salmon traveled thousands of miles while being stored, at exactly minus 70 Celsius. Not one degree higher. Not one moment outside protocol, because even a brief fluctuation could destroy the color, texture, and market value of cargo that's often worth more than the plane carrying it. The process begins hours before the aircraft even leaves the tarmac. At a distribution facility near coastal fisheries in Japan, Canada, or Norway, seafood is harvested, flash-frozen with liquid nitrogen, and packed into insulated crates fitted with RFID temperature trackers. These trackers don't just monitor, they alert. Any deviation, even by 0.5 ik, sends an instant notification to ground control and onboard systems. The crates are pre-chilled, the cargo hold is conditioned, and dry ice is strategically placed. To stabilize interior microclimates, every element is calculated, not for efficiency, but for preservation. Once loaded, the aircraft's entire environmental system shifts into a specialized cold chain configuration. These are not standard cargo planes. Most have been heavily modified walls insulated with vacuum panels, floors reinforced to carry sub-zero cryo units, and some even equipped with separate atmospheric zones. It's not rare to find sections. Of the plane maintaining different temperatures for different species of fish, each with its own optimal preservation point, bluefin at minus 60 Celsius, yellowtail at minus 40 Celsius, and sea urchin kept slightly warmer to avoid crystallization. Pilots are trained in cold chain logistics. Flight paths are optimized not for speed alone, but for consistency in altitude and temperature. Avoiding jet streams or climate turbulence that might impact interior regulation. But the obsession with temperature doesn't end in the air. The moment the aircraft begins its descent, a team on the ground is already synchronized to receive and transfer the cargo with zero exposure to ambient air. The crates are offloaded onto refrigerated dollies driven into a waiting cold room kept at minus 30 Celsius, and immediately scanned for temperature consistency. There's no pause, no break. From ocean to air, to distribution hub, the fish never truly touch room temperature. It's as if they were suspended in time, caught, frozen, and delivered in a kind of cryogenic stasis. At these receiving hubs, often located in Tokyo, Singapore, Dubai, or Los Angeles, buyers and chefs aren't just looking for freshness they're looking for structural perfection. A bluefin belly that was even slightly exposed to warmth will lose its marbled shine. The molecular structure will shift, subtly altering the flavor and mouthfeel. At auction, such a flaw can slash the value of a fish by tens of thousands of dollars. That's why exporters invest in aerospace-grade cold storage modules, GPS-tracked containers with real-time environmental logging, and even backup cryo systems that kick in mid-flight if the primary system fails. The economics are staggering. A single flight can carry up to $3 million in frozen fish. The packaging alone for some premium cuts can exceed $500 per crate. This isn't just transport, it's preservation as art, and it's done at a level of precision most consumers will never know exists. When a customer in New York bites into a piece of Otoro that tastes like it was sliced five minutes ago off the coast of Hokkaido, it's because an entire international network of freezing engineers, airline technicians, and seafood handlers made sure of it. It's a race against heat, not time. Time can be managed. Delays can be accounted for. But the cold, the integrity of that minus 70 Celsius environment, must never be compromised. That's why companies now use predictive AI to monitor every step of the cold chain. Adjusting coolant levels mid-flight, rerouting flights in real-time based on weather data, and remotely locking container systems if human error threatens to. Break protocol. It's logistics at the edge of science, where biology meets refrigeration. And refrigeration meets aviation. The science of storing fish at minus 70 Celsius during flight goes beyond temperature it touches on microbiology air pressure, material science, and even psychology. 
Every component of this airborne cold chain is designed to maintain an illusion that the fish never left the ocean. One of the most overlooked yet critical aspects is oxygen control inside the sealed crates. At such low temperatures, the risk isn't just thawing, but oxidation. Fish fats, especially in high-grade species like toro or king salmon, are incredibly sensitive to oxygen exposure. To prevent this, many crates are packed with modified atmosphere packaging, where inert gases like nitrogen or argon are pumped in to displace oxygen. This prevents oxidation, preserves the color of the flesh, and extends the window of perfect texture. These gas ratios are adjusted depending on the fat content of the species being shipped, often calibrated in real time by digital sensors embedded in the lid of the container, beyond the crates themselves. The surrounding cargo hold of the aircraft becomes a living system. It's not just cold, it's alive with data. Sensors constantly feed information to ground-based dashboards monitored by logistics specialists. Any sudden change in cabin pressure, humidity, or turbulence is logged and, if necessary, triggers automatic corrective measures inside the containers. Some crates even come with adaptive insulation materials that change thermal conductivity based on the environment. If external temperature spikes, the insulation stiffens, locking in the internal cold like a defensive reflex. This kind of reactive material technology, borrowed from the aerospace and biomedical industries, has only recently become viable for commercial fish logistics and it's already transforming how seafood reaches fine dining destinations. On the operational side, the chain of custody is just as critical as the refrigeration. From the moment the fish is flash frozen, every hand that touches it is logged. Every door it passes through is timestamped. This isn't about bureaucracy, it's about accountability. A single breach in cold chain protocol can destroy a shipment. And with hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake, Companies now implement blockchain tracking for premium cuts. Each crate is assigned a digital ID, linked to a blockchain ledger that records its journey in immutable detail, when it was frozen, how long it was held, when it was loaded, altitude data, temperature graphs, delivery time stops, and even the ID of the worker who handled it. Chefs and buyers can scan a QR code and access this data before ever opening the box. It's radical transparency and it's quickly becoming industry standard. The human element, though, is still indispensable. At Tokyo's Narita Airport, seafood logistics crews train for months to learn how to handle ultra-frozen cargo. Gloves must be rated for cryogenic temperatures. Movements must be precise and quick to slow, and the ambient temperature begins. To interact with the fish, too rough and the delicate flesh could crack under its frozen state. Even the timing of when a crate is moved from the plane to the refrigerated truck is rehearsed. Some facilities go as far as building cold tunnels. From the runway directly into processing bays, eliminating all contact with outside air. It may sound excessive, but when a single piece of fish is destined to be served at $350 a plate, perfection isn't optional its protocol. What makes this process even more astonishing is the scale. This isn't an occasional luxury shipment. For elite clients, it happens daily, sometimes hourly, from ports in Vancouver, Oslo, Hokkaido, and Seoul. In a single week, hundreds of tons of seafood are shipped around the world under these exacting conditions, and the demand is only rising. Global sushi consumption has exploded in the last decade, and with it, a silent revolution in cold chain logistics has taken place. Airlines are now forming partnerships with seafood exporters building dedicated flight corridors just for ultra-cold cargo. Some airports are expanding frozen freight terminals, equipped with AI-cooled storage rooms that self-regulate based on cargo content and estimated dwell time. The evolution doesn't stop there. New technologies are on the horizon, including phase change materials that remain at minus 70 Celsius without dry ice, nano-coated crates that repel heat, and smart crates that self-report anomalies and reroute themselves autonomously through cargo networks to avoid warm delays. Companies are experimenting with Lorbit satellite links to track shipments with millimeter precision, giving logistics teams real-time feedback even in international airspace. In some prototype systems, the crates themselves can talk to one. Another, adjusting positioning within the plane's cargo bay for maximum thermal efficiency. And yet, to the consumer, none of this is visible. They see the glistening cut on a plate the vibrant marbling, 
the cool touch of the fish against rice and assume it's the skill of the chef. And they're not wrong. But behind that dish is an orchestra of science, engineering, and human precision. Working across time zones and oceans to preserve something as fragile as flavor. When a diner in Snow Palo, Sydney, or Stockholm tastes that clean oceanic sweetness. They're not just eating sushi, they're experiencing a global ballet of refrigeration and flight. Even more remarkable than the logistics themselves is the quiet competition behind them. The global race for seafood freshness has created a battleground, not only between chefs and restaurants, but between entire countries. Japan, for example, once dominated the market with its near monopoly on ultra-frozen tuna transportation. For decades, their fleets and cargo systems were unmatched built around a tight integration between coastal fisheries, cryogenic flash freezing units, and exclusive air corridors that delivered to Tsukiji and Toyosu markets with military precision. But in recent years, other nations have caught up. Canada, Norway, and even Chile have invested heavily in modernizing their cold chain infrastructure. And some now boast faster turnaround times from dock to delivery than Tokyo ever did. What? Pushed. This evolution wasn't just the demand for more sushi it was data. High-resolution tracking systems began to show that certain routes, despite being shorter on paper, resulted in higher temperature fluctuations due to flight altitude, humidity changes, or ground handling delays. In response, shipping algorithms were rewritten. Flight paths were changed, entire supply chains were rerouted, sometimes bypassing major airports in favor of lesser-known hubs that offered better cold storage continuity. In one example, a premium shipment of sea urchin originally routed through London began landing in Helsinki in Stednots because it was faster. But because Helsinki's newer cold terminal had more stable cryo-retention systems, these changes extend all the way down to packaging materials. Traditional styrofoam boxers, once the standard, are being replaced with high-tech polymer composites that can maintain internal temperatures for up to 96 hours without supplemental cooling. Some of these boxes are equipped with embedded phase gels, which absorb and release thermal energy based on surrounding temperatures. Others are lined with layers of AeroGlan Ultralight NASA-grade material that insulates better than any foam ever could. The result? A crate that can sit on a delayed runway in equatorial heat and still arrive with its contents perfectly preserved. And yet, despite all the machinery and technology, some of the most critical decisions are still made by people specifically. The cold chain strategists, these are professionals who analyze thousands of variables before a single shipment is approved. They simulate routes, account for airport traffic, political delays, and even forecasted jet stream activity. One miscalculation could mean a $200,000 loss in spoiled cargo. Because of this, some companies are now hiring former air traffic controllers and meteorologists as part of their logistics teams. These aren't just fish shipments, they're perishable assets moving in a volatile global theater. On the receiving end, restaurants and culinary institutions have begun adapting their operations to match the sophistication of the cold chain. High-end sushi restaurants in New York, London, and Dubai now feature built-in cryo-fridges calibrated specifically for imported fish cuts. These units replicate the storage conditions used mid-flight, ensuring that the fish doesn't go into shock. From a sudden temperature shift when it's unpacked, in some Michelin-starred kitchens, fish is allowed to breathe in a controlled re-entry chamber a mini-cold room that gradually raises. The temperature of the fish over 12 hours, without condensation forming on its surface, preventing bacterial bloom and texture damage. Even consumer markets have started to benefit from the trickle-down of this technology. Supermarkets in major cities now offer ultra-frozen sushi-grade fish that was once reserved only for restaurants. These products, packaged in vacuum-sealed nitrogen-filled sleeves, are often indistinguishable from freshly caught fish when thawed correctly. Cur codes on the packaging link to detailed cold chain records, showing consumers when and where the fish was caught, how it was frozen, and its exact temperature readings throughout the journey. It's a level of transparency that was unheard of a decade ago, and it's reshaping consumer trust in frozen seafood. Meanwhile, back at the origin, points, entire port towns have restructured their economies around the precision of this process. In Hokkaido, entire shifts of dock workers are timed to match air freight schedules rather than tides. 
In northern Norway, coastal airports have extended their runways to accommodate larger cargo planes with specialized cold bays. And in British Columbia, fisheries are installing blockchain integrated catch sensors that automatically log data to shipping crates the moment a fish is pulled from the water. Syncing harvest time with transport windows in real time. These aren't just adjustments, they're evolutions. The future of seafood transport is not just colder, but smarter. Predictive AI systems are already being integrated into global cold chain platforms, capable of anticipating failures before they happen by learning from millions of past shipments. These systems can suggest alternate routing, trigger equipment checks, or recommend delaying a flight by six hours to avoid a tropical storm that hasn't even formed yet. Some are even able to simulate how a crate will respond to pressure changes on specific aircraft models, down to individual set-level placement in the cargo bay. This level of detail ensures the preservation of something as fragile and fleeting as flavor, delivered on time, and untouched by heat. As this cold revolution continues, it's reshaping not only how seafood moves, but how the entire food supply chain is understood. For centuries, fish was considered one of the most delicate, most perishable commodities, vulnerable to spoilage within hours, if not preserved perfectly. But today, with cryogenic logistics, real-time monitoring, AI-driven rerouting, and precision, handling, it's now among the most tightly controlled items in global trade. And in an era where logistics determines freshness, the ones mastering temperature are the ones leading the future. What's most fascinating is how much of this system works silently, invisibly, beneath the awareness of the everyday consumer. A diner in a bustling New York bistro sees a piece of Otoro placed before them and praises the chef. A couple in Dubai selects sashimi from a chilled display and assumes it came from a local distributor. They rarely imagine the thousands of hands, the engineering breakthroughs, the microchips and metal that allowed that fish to reach them in pristine condition. They don't see the cryopackers in Hokkaido working in gloves so thick they can barely move their fingers. They don't hear the hum of refrigerated runways in northern Europe or the ping of thermal trackers sinking to satellites mid-flight. They experience only the end product. And that's exactly the point. The entire system exists to make that experience seamless, effortless, perfect. As we push further into automation, some companies are developing autonomous drones for regional deliveries of frozen fish between smaller islands and coastal towns, cutting delivery times to a fraction and minimizing the need for human handling. Others are experimenting with deep-sea cold vaults, underwater refrigeration stations anchored off the coast where fish can be stored before pickup, maintaining freezing conditions without external energy inputs. And a few visionary firms are testing the feasibility of cryosuspension, a process that could allow fish to be preserved at a molecular level for years, then revived with zero texture loss. It sounds like science fiction, but much of today's cold chain would have seemed impossible just 15 years ago. And yet, all of this returns to a simple truth. Quality is fragile. The path from the ocean to the plate is long complicated, and full of threats to that fragile standard. Heat, oxygen, mishandling, delay each of them a small crack in the chain. And so, every link must hold. From the fisherman on a foggy dock to the technician calibrating thermal units at 3 a.m. in an airport hangar, each person is part of the same invisible mission. Protect the catch. The fish never gets to tell its story. It never describes the 10,000 kilometers it traveled, the storms it flew over, the blizzards it passed beneath, or the algorithms that rerouted it mid-air to a better airport. But if you've listened closely through this journey, you've heard the story for it, you've seen the systems, the precision, the silent war against heat. You've understood that what seems simple, a slice of raw fish on a plate, is in fact the final result of a global symphony perfectly timed, scientifically engineered, and obsessively maintained. If stories like this fascinate you, if you want to keep exploring the hidden systems behind what we eat and how it moves across the planet, then this is just the beginning. Subscribe to our channel and join us as we uncover more unseen worlds behind everyday foods and the extraordinary journeys they make before ever reaching your hands.